Peace, love, blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to another episode of Life, Love, and Living Water. I got a very special guest with me today. This is Brother Mercy. Amen, amen. He's a born-again believer, child of the king, preacher, artist. Uh, you might have seen him on some of my recent videos of him singing his song, Rejoice with His Son. Yes. Uh, yeah, man. How are you? Man, blessed and thankful, bro. Blessed and thankful. Doing good, man. It's an honor and a privilege uh, to be here on your podcast with you, man. Thank you for inviting me. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Me too, man. Uh, me and Brother Mercy, we crossed paths about a month ago. We did a show together in um, Indiana. Yeah. And we crossed paths there. We had spoke a little bit on Facebook before that, but uh, we've crossed paths a couple times since then. And it's just like one of those things like when you know, man, when you know that the Lord is working in on, somebody's now. heart, you know. And uh, I watched a video that you reposted of you preaching, man. Okay. And it was uh, on self-love. Yes, yes, yes. Man, bro. Man. <laughs> I listened to that and I was like, listen, you guys got to look this guy up, listen man. to him, give sermons on, you know, just passionate studies. Amen. Amen. And uh Truth, man. Mm -hmm. Truth, that penetrating truth. Man. Man, the word says that Jesus dwelt among us full of grace and truth. You know, in uh, my productions, it's, it's Love, Grace, and Mercy productions, right? Obviously, I go by Brother Mercy. And, and, and so the grace of God and the, and the mercy of God and the love of God is first and foremost, right? But if it's not tethered to the truth of God, you can get into some dangerous waters. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are who have detached the love of God from the truth of God. Mm -hmm. And when it's all feelings and no truth, man, it can get real dangerous because it can start sounding a lot like the world. And it can sound real good. And it can feel real good. But if there's no truth attached to the love, because just as much as God is love, God is truth, you know what I'm saying? And you can't have one without the other. So that's why I hold on so tight to both, full of grace and truth, mm. you know? That's the good. The embodiment of both. Yeah. I've experienced that, man, getting too far ahead of myself or uh, when it get, get down right to it, just acting in my own will mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and getting far from the truth, just right. like stepping in muddy waters. And it's like, man... Uh, you know, I'll rewatch some stuff that I've put out there. It's like, I don't know about this. Right, right. I'm probably about to delete this. Man, right, <laughs> right. But I tell you what, that's, you know, that's where God's grace is, right? Because we're all growing, we're all learning. And just as much as you can lean too far into love and forsake truth, you can lean too far into truth and mm. forsake love. You know what I'm saying? When it's heavy, cold, heartless truth. Yeah. With no compassion, no consideration, no love, you know. People are ready to stone you because yeah, your hair is long. Yeah, man, don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. Man, that's, and, and I love, you know, the word says, trust the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Uh, matter of fact, it says, trust the Lord your God. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he, he shall, shall direct, direct your, your path. path, right? Fear the Lord, or it says, do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil, right? And there's a lot of people trying to interpret the scripture with their own understanding, or this is what I say all the time, there's a difference between revelation and regurgitation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Regurgitation is pastor so-and-so said it, and I'm going to run with it. Brother so-and-so said it, and I'm going to run with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But revelation is something that God gave you, and you can speak that with a level of conviction and love. You know what I'm saying? Because just as true as it may be, God was graceful and patient in delivering it to you and, and, and waiting till it takes root and help, helping you understand that. And you'll have the same compassion and, and, and love and grace and patience with everybody else. You know, if you're all intellectual and you're proud about, you know what I'm saying? Your, your theologies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the word says knowledge puffs up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You get proud about what you know. You, I've seen you think, it. man, it's crazy. I've and lived it. Yeah. No, I was about to say it's, it's easy to get there. 
Uh, but the word says, you know, what do we have that we've not been given? You know, let's say I am further along than you. Let's say I do understand uh, some of the mysteries of God, some of the uh, bigger things of God. Man, it's only by the grace of God that I understand that, you yeah. know. And if I do have more of something, it's not for me to be proud, but it's for me to help you grow and learn and to understand, you know. God, you know, the haves are to benefit the have-nots. Have you ever used revelations that God has given you, I guess, in a perverted way? Or in a way that was proud, fueled by pride, mishandled? I'd like to believe no, but I'm sure somewhere, yeah. You know, like, I can't pinpoint anything that I was, you know, certainly, like, trying to manipulate something to, mm -hmm. to uh, advance or grow, you know, but uh, I'd like to say no, you know what I'm saying? But knowing humanity and knowing, you know, my imperfections, maybe, you know, I can't say every single motive and thought of my heart was pure in every single instance, but I can't, no red flags have come are coming up where it's like, nah, son, you, you twisted it for that one, you know? I can recall times that, I guess I wasn't aware of it at the time, uh -huh. but God made me aware of it later. Okay, that, like, okay. Yeah, I shut it off. Yeah, you, yeah. Because okay. you was mishandling it. Man. And it's like, you know, God was giving me so many revelations, man. And I'm talking things that you've just never, you never read about it. Right. You never heard about it. And it, those blow your wig yeah, type Yeah, moments. yeah, yeah. And to wield those around like it's just something to talk about. For sure. Without seeking his wisdom on what to do with it. Right. I can look back and see a lot of the times God gave me a revelation. I was like in my quiet place, God gave me something. I'm like, all right, guys, right, I'm right. going to talk about this because it was something to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it's like I experienced God withdrawing it. Yeah, yeah. In a sense that I only have bits and pieces of the memory yeah. of the entirety of this revelation. I see, I see. And uh, and then to receive the revelation of, of like, this is what happened. This right. is why. It's like, wow. And then God gave me the revelation that uh, some of the things that he reveals to me is just for me Man, and him. Listen. It's for me to worship him. Yes, Not yes. for me to go talk about to sound Man. knowledgeable or wise. For sure. He's like, I gave that to you so you would, you would worship me. Right, right. Because oh, wow. I just I blessed you. Wow. There's definitely been plenty of times where... Uh, He's shown me things and revealed things to me that I knew was not for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and when I spoke about it, I knew it wasn't either it wasn't for everybody or it wasn't for that situation or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't get the release to share that, you know, and, and yeah. it backfired, you know, yeah. because... That's kind of what I was talking yeah. about, you know, when I asked that question. Yeah, because sometimes, I mean, if if... People aren't prepared, you know, to to hear what you have to share. It's going to backfire. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 not going to be received well, or they got their own mind made up about something, and you can get proud about. Nah, God showed me this. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like you're wrong, and it's like it's not necessarily that you're wrong. It's just an angle that they haven't seen it from, mm -hmm. and are un willing whether you know by pride or immaturity they're unwilling to see it from that angle you know and so yeah there's there's been a couple times when that's happened for sure hmm. well man we got five questions prepared for each other all right all right uh i believe you got some for me yes sir i got some for you all right um yeah we'll get right into it man so what did the turning point look like for you whenever you, whenever your life changed, man, you surrendered your life to the Lord, what was that pivot point? What did it look like? Man, okay. So that's a loaded question for real, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like a heavy period of time, man. Like uh, I had been doing music for so long, man, uh, most of my life. And I got to a point where, you know, me and my team, you know, BC, 
we almost got signed to to Ludacris and DTP, you know, DTP's Ludacris's record label disturbing the peace, right? Mm. Uh we had won this competition and I got a glimpse of of where we could go and what we could do, but some some of the stuff we were doing, uh, you know, mainly mixtapes and stuff, there was a hindrance of how far we could go and then the offer that they gave us, we didn't have the money to match what they were willing to put up and stuff. And so like that gave me an extra drive to push harder. I start pumping out more music and we're starting to do, you know, more shows and, you know, tours and just getting out there and pushing heavy. So was you doing like worldly music? Yeah, at yeah, yeah. At that time, because I didn't get saved till, you know, 2017. I was like 27, 28 years old, you know. And so, you know, but I had been doing music since I was 10 you know, rapping since I was 10. So, I mean, I was getting it. Yeah, it, I was, we were out there, man. And I was gifted. I was talented, you know, and and I had a bright future ahead of me from the, from the world standards, you know. And so uh, I just kept hitting these walls, right? And whenever I hit these walls, I'm like, okay, I know how to hurdle those, right? So I do whatever I can to get past it. Uh, but 2015 came along and... Uh, like we had moved to Florida and I just started dropping weight like crazy. Like I got down to like 187 pounds and I hadn't been that since I was my son's age, you know, mm -hmm. like I was, you know, uh, want to say 13, 13, 14 years old last time I was that size and it, but it was just dropping off, man. And I knew something was not right but I was dying like of diabetes and it was uh, uncontrolled and undiagnosed diabetes. Oh, wow. And so I was dying, but I, I knew something in me knew I was on my way out. Right. So I'm, it gave me this drive to like, man, I got to leave something behind. I got to do something that's going to make an impact on the world where I'm not going to be forgotten. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive. I'm going to push all the things that were in the way. I'm going to learn what I need to learn and build what I need to build to get where I want to go before it's time to go. And, uh, you know, there's this, just this pride bubbling up in me and I'm like, okay. So I build up these projects. Um, you know, these basically it was this, uh, 10 year, five album, hundred million dollar business plan, business endeavor that I was, it was all laid out. I knew what merch I was dropping, what projects I was dropping, what what tours I was going. Like, I mean, I had the master plan written out and um, I'm dying at this point. And I had an encounter with Satan in my basement. I remember like there was this song, like I was chanting this song. Mm. I need a hundred million dollars. I need a hundred million dollars on the real. That was the song, right? And that was the song that I would chant over and over again because, man, if I could only get this hundred million dollars, right, I would be able to take care of my family. I would be able to take care of my friends. I would be able to leave something for my kids. I would be able to have an impact on the world around me like money. It was all that I needed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I could I could mass produce stuff in such a way where nobody would forget me. Even if I'm not here, I would be remembered, you know, and and be able to make an impact on people's lives. And, and you know, while chanting this song and the preparation of the the launching of this project i had an encounter with satan in my basement and he offered me everything that my heart desired at that time i idolized lil wayne and in cash money like that was my dream to be signed to them i saw in a moment of time a vision of me on stage with Wayne, you know what I'm saying? Like I saw in a moment of time, a vision of me standing in front of crowds of millions being received well, you know what I'm saying, for this music that I was doing. Uh, and I remember writing my name down on this yellow post-it note. And in hindsight, what I was doing was signing my life away. I had came into agreement with Satan concerning this vision, this contract, this, you know, offering, you know. And uh, shortly after, I heard the voice of the Lord say, what shall it profit a man 
to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And from that moment, I was like, I'm, I'm cool. I don't want this. I don't want this. I'm done with music. I quit. I give up. And I ended up surrendering my life to Christ. Um, you know, and there was a sto- there was a, there's a story leading up to that, you know, but I ended up surrendering my life to Christ in my bathroom and I quit music with the intention of never doing it again because I was convinced that all music was of the devil. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> you know, the way that I was doing it and, and uh, you know, my heart for it. And so I, I quit music and I started to pursue the Lord. I started to study the word. I started to go to church. I started to, you know, find out who Jesus is. You know, the word says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yeah. Learn of me. Learn who I am. And learn who you are in me. You know, learn what I've said about you. Learn my plan for you, my will for you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, you know? And like, it was so contrary to the proud spirit that I had developed, you know, this, this like arrogant entitlement of like, I deserve recognition because of my talent. I deserve to be, you know, I'm so much better than this person or that person. I'm, I've, I put in so much work and I deserve what I've worked for. That was the spirit that was upon me. You know what I'm saying? But when I encountered Jesus, when I heard the gospel, when I surrendered my life to Christ and I laid it all down and I began pursuing him with all my heart and I fell in love with him, you know, my desires changed and I, I I really had no intention of going back to music. Mm. But as I developed my relations, as, as my d- relationship with him developed, uh, you know, about eight months later, a door opened and he told me, you know, I'm the one that gave you that gift. Mm. So Come you're on. no longer going to use it to glorify yourself. You're no longer going to use it to glorify the world and the things of the world, but you're going to use it mm. to glorify Christ, to glorify the kingdom, to preach the gospel, to preach the word. And I'm like, amen. You know what I'm saying? So Let's not go. only do I get the one I love and the one that loved me before I even understood what that meant, but I also get to declare through what I love mm. You know what I'm saying? The one I love. And I'm like, it's a win, win, <laughs> win situation. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. like, and it, and it really put the icing on the cake when he showed me that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. That man that made that agreement with Satan in that basement, that wasn't you. Mm. That man's dead. That means any contract and any agreement that was made is null and void. You know what I'm saying? He he can't hold that over your head because that price was paid in full, you know? And that, man, that freed me. You know, I talk about the liberty and the freedom of Christ who the Son set free is free indeed. Like that right there. And, and you know, I'm free from the bondage of anything that I ever did. You know what I'm saying? Any sin that I ever committed, any, you know, thing that was ever done to me, you know, I'm free from that. You know, I I don't hold any grudges. I don't hold, you know, any art against nobody. It's Mm. like, man, that person was dead. So whatever you did to him, I'm not mad at you for it because you didn't do it to me. You know what I'm saying? And whatever that person did to you, I'm going to apologize on behalf of him. You know what I'm saying? Because that was a lost and broken man looking for identity, living by this standard of self-love. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, you know, preach so heavy against self-love, right? Because all I was doing in that time was loving myself, Mm -hmm. serving myself focused on myself you know the word says esteem others is more important than yourself you know what i'm saying uh to love your neighbor as yourself you know i believe that scripturally before christ it's not that you don't love yourself 
Mm-hmm. It's that you love yourself too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You love yourself so much that you're willing to, to kill yourself through gluttony because you can't tell yourself no. Mm. You're willing to kill yourself through substance abuse because you can't tell yourself no. You're willing to rob, steal, kill, let people down because you love you and it doesn't matter about anybody else. Mm. I got to get mine. And if everybody else in this world suffers, that is what it is because it's me first. And then whatever's left is for you. But the love of Christ is dying to yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's about everybody and anybody but you. When you realize you're already loved with an everlasting love, you don't need to love yourself. Yeah. I am loved. Yeah. That's powerful to me, you know? And it so is. it takes the attention off of you. And what got me to the place where I was so susceptible to the enticements of the enemy was because he was willing to offer me everything I wanted. Whatever you want, I'm going to put it on a silver platter. But the moment you say yes to it, I own you. That's crazy to me. You know, it's that, it's that, that, that bowl of soup, that little morsel, you know, but what did it profit? And so like, man, that's, that's, how I got, that was my turning point. That was my turning point, that encounter where the the fullness of me, I was about to reap the consequences of that. And even when I got to that point where there was no turning around, that's where I met Jesus. And he said, it's still not too late. You know what I'm saying? There is a, there is a, a fork in the road right now, you know, because truth is, I could have said no to Jesus at that time. But there's no guarantee that there would be another exit down the road. There's no guarantee that I could have that I would have made it another year. There's no guarantee that, you know, I wouldn't have been too, you know, too deep in it to right. even hear his voice. You know, that might have been my last chance. And I praise him that I heard him at that time, you know, because there was there was other times where I heard him, but ignored him and kept going my way, you know? And so, man, that was, that was the turning point, you know? That was the turning point. It's awesome, man. Yeah, man. But let me ask you, when, where was your turning point? Where was your turning point? Oh, boy. So, you know, a lot of the things that you said resonate with me. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's what I did my whole life. I... I loved myself too much, man. Right. You know, through all the addiction and just everything that I pursued throughout my every waking moment Mm -hmm. was to fully satisfy my desires. And then, like you said, if I had anything left over, I would give it to the people close to me. And Mm -hmm. it was usually table scraps, if anything. If anything. And so I was raised in a church, man. And, uh, you know, I, I say that. I knew about Jesus, but I never knew Jesus. And there had been times throughout my life where my attention was set on Jesus because my life had come to ruin. And um, those times that he came to me, like, hey, I can, I'm here to save you. I love you. And I would pursue him and experience that shift in my heart start to happen. Mm -hmm. But I would never surrender myself Mm -hmm. to him Mm. through ignorance through uh greed you know everything not wanting to give up Mm. and so this last time around man um i was like heavy on this pursuit of truth i had like this spiritual awakening i call it right and it was like uh i'll just tell you the story man i would download it's crazy bro it's crazy because like even how you, you know, tell that story that you just told, you know, the music has always been in your life, mm-hmm. bro. I can remember laying in my bed just as a, a kid mm-hmm. in like elementary school with my CD player, my headphones on. Right. And just imagining like, and this was back in recess, bro. Mm-hmm. Cause I would imagine like these cars would pull up on this gravel road and uh, I would be on top of the cars with a couple of my other buddies and I would be the one performing the songs. And it's like everybody in the school was listening. So that vision was always there, man. 
And then it's like, you know, fast forward throughout my addiction, somehow I got on the course that I was going to be a rapper. Right, right. And I'm like writing music and I'm trying to freestyle. Uh, totally worldly. I suck too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mind was so scrambled from, you know, addiction. I right. couldn't put two sticks together and rub them if I wanted to <laughs> and make a sound. But uh, so I would, down, I, I mean, I'm, you know, strung out. I didn't even have phone service. So I, I'm living with my parents and I would download beats mm -hmm. to listen to while I cut grass. That's what I did right. for money. I cut grass for eight hours a day and I would listen to these beats and freestyle. Right. I had downloaded this video mm -hmm. okay just the audio of it and um i got to work it was about reaping and sowing what the heck is that skip it listen to all my beats and you know i'm in the zone throughout the day and that video starts to play and this dude breaks down mind you i've been in the church since i was a kid um seen radical things i've seen the salvation of my parents worked out okay. in them and my grandparents Man. so uh and i felt alone on that you know there was nobody in my life that I could relate to. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just like a personal thing for sure. to talk about it. But this guy starts talking about reaping and sowing, man. But it's from an angle that I've never heard it. You know, right. he wasn't preaching Bible. He was preaching self-righteousness. Right. Okay. Like you can program your mind or your mind, your, your life experience is a direct reflection of your subconscious programming. Wow. Pretty much. Wow. You reap what you sow, what has been sown into you. That mm -hmm. what, that's what you reap. Okay. And so it shook me, man. And in a moment, I began to question everything I was ever taught. Who mm -hmm. taught me? Who taught them? Why was I taught this? Wow. And I started to see like, wow, they, they uh, you know, attacked my subconscious mind to give me this life that I'm experiencing now. Wow. So it's like pump the brakes. Now I'm trying to rewind everything. For sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, it was a terrible experience. I mean, it shook me to my core. And I ended up meeting this guy, bro. Uh, I was making beats. Okay. You know, this is the first time I was, like, exploring this creative side. Right, right. Of myself. And I'm making beats. And I took my stuff out of my mom's house for the first time. And I was, I was recording this guy. And mind you, I had this, this vision. I don't remember what it stemmed from. But, like, I was going to start recording people. Okay. In the vision, it was like I have a vision of me recording all the dope boys. I was right. always trying to gain the favor or attention of the dope boys. Right, right. And so I meet this guy, bro. He's having the same experience in his life. He's from Montgomery, Alabama. And I moved all of my stuff into his house the next day. It wasn't even a house. It was more like a bedroom. Somebody turned into a little apartment. Okay. I slept on the floor in a wow. kitchen. But uh, we had this... You know, spiritual awakening, man. We're on the pursuit of truth and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we would look anywhere and everywhere besides Christ. You keep the Bible man, stuff away. Keep man. the Bible stuff away out of it, or out of it because you know, we started forming this um, idea that the Bible was written by the government right. to stop you from figuring out uh -huh. who you really are and the power you possess right, to right. reprogram your mind. Wow. And so we're listening to different religious leaders, teachers, doctors, scientists, you, you name it. We stopped listening to music, stopped list, watching movies. It's, if it's not teaching us something, we don't want it. Right, And we right. did that every day. Started sleeping outside, uh, letting the sun hit our naked bodies, right, right. quit eating meat, all of this stuff, man. That's when I quit cutting my hair, too. Okay. I, okay. And I haven't cut my hair since then. Wow, wow. But uh, so it's crazy stuff, bro. And, and at the end of the day, it was just teaching self-righteousness. And... Um, I had got off narcotics for a year. I'm just kind of just fast forwarding through this. Um, and I'm in a place where I feel like I've attained so much knowledge, bro. Mm -hmm. Where it's like I could sit down with someone and start speaking and it just blow their mind. And they just look at you like you're, they're, they're lost. Like you just blew their mind, literally. Yes. And, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but whenever that was happening, people was not having a good experience. Yeah, for sure. It's like whenever you make somebody question everything that they believe, mm -hmm. it uproots you, man. Mm -hmm. And it, it hurts. But uh, I started teaching this stuff on the internet. Right. And because it's the truth, but it's perverted. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a perverted lie. It's like a new age Gnosticism, yeah. right? 
and it seemed really attractive. And because it didn't have the religion aspect labeled mm-hmm. on it, people was really buying into it. Right. I got people coming up to me in, in, in restaurants, shaking my hand and telling me how much, you know, they love what I'm doing. And then it was like, boom, man, man, this storm came into my life. And Jesus, you know, somebody told me the parable when he leaves the 99 to find the one. Yes. The one isn't just the lost sinner. The one who's a part has been a part of the herd. Right, right. The flock, and he keeps leaving. Yes, Like I said, man, I've had multiple encounters with Christ throughout this course of my life, and I kept leaving. I kept leaving. Right. And the guy told me, he said, man, in real life, the shepherd will break the sheep's legs. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's dependent upon the shepherd. Beautiful. For life. Yes. And when it heals, it won't depart from the flock again. Come on. So I see this storm that came into my life, bro, was God-ordained. I relapsed. And... uh, Dude, I couldn't have spoke anything on the internet if I wanted to. Right. This relapse took my soul. Mm, mm. And it's like my video business is starting to come up. I got a lot to lose. I thought the drugs was behind me. Right. I don't want to do drugs no more. Yeah. Couldn't stop. And I, it, it took everything, man. And that was the first time and the, and the only time I ever experienced Christ coming after me. Come on. Come on. You know, the other times in my life, I feel like I was reaching out to him Mm -hmm. and he was there. Right. This time I'm at a place in my life where I'm deepest in my rebellion. I'm teaching people against Christ. Right. If you tell me you believe in Christ, I'm I'm trying to show you that you're wrong. Wow. Wow. The time I deserved his wrath the most, bro, was when he came to me and revealed his love. Thank you. And, you know, man, I just remember being... So sorry. That's all I could do mm-hmm. was be sorry and tell him I was sorry for rejecting that love. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things have happened, man, since that moment. It's like I realized that that love that I felt that night wasn't a revelation of something new. It was something I had felt before and forgot about. Yeah. And then, like, recently, God gave me a revelation. Uh, I don't know if I told you this or not, but, like, when we're a, when we're a baby, mm-hmm. when we're born, yeah. It's like the first time we're separated from God. Yeah. You know, if he said, you know, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Yeah. We were with God. Come on. We were in the midst of his love. Yes, yes. And then we're pulled out of it, put into this world, and we're screaming, mm-hmm. screaming in agony, bro. You never mm-hmm. see a baby come out just smiling. Right, right, right. Screaming. We don't even know how to fart yet. Right, come but on. we know yeah. that we're in agony and something is wrong. Man. And there's like God gave me the vision of like the baby opens his eyes. It's just stimulated by it. Yeah. Everything that it sees and everything it hears, what yeah. it feels, smells, and tastes. And for a moment, it forgets. Wow. What is this? Right. But you leave the baby alone for a little bit, and it don't take long for it to remember. Yeah. Something is wrong. I'm screaming. Yes, yes. And that followed me throughout my whole life, man. Wow. Even as a child. Wow. You know, I had to have my cartoons or my sugary treats. Yeah. To distract me from the fact that there's a void inside of me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? St- w- the way that this vision came to me was a revelation was I was asking the Lord is right in here. When I thought about killing myself, how did I come up with the conclusion that no one would miss me? Right. Cause I can look back now and see that they would. Man. And he took me back yep. to the void, the void that was happening. And then the enemy comes in, you know, with the intention, knowing that later in the life, he's going to tempt me to take my life. Yeah. 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 There's some things that have to happen from mm-hmm. now. And he had me pinpoint that void that I felt inside of me on people right. or circumstances. You feel the way you feel inside because they did that to you or because they didn't do this for you or because they wasn't there. You know, so by the time that I thought about taking my life, all the people who loved me the most, I had grudges built against, man. Mm, mm, mm. So it didn't matter what they thought or felt. Crazy, bro. You know, I think about this, right? When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he was tempted with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? He was also tempted with, number one, to forsake the will of God, right? Abort the fast, right? You're pressing in in this fast, about to be launched into the fullness of your ministry, right? Abort that. That's Mm -hmm. what Satan tried to do. Turn this stone into bread, right? Man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He's like, cool, throw yourself off this pinnacle, all right? If you won't forsake the will of God, die so that you can't fulfill it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Take your own life. 
God's going to save you anyways, right? He'll protect you. He'll send his angels if you dash your foot against the stone. He said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So number one, he tried to get him to abandon the will of the Father. Number two, he tried to get him to commit to commit suicide, to c- kill himself so that he couldn't fulfill the will of the Father. And then number three, he says, bow to me and I'll give all of this to you. You know what I'm saying? Every Everything that you see, I'll give it to you. The kingdoms of this world, it's yours. All you got to do is bow to me. Don't serve him, serve me. Mm. And so, you know, he's come to us all in some way, shape, or form and offered us those same things. You know, he can't, I said in a moment of time, he showed me this vision of me, my dreams coming true, me standing with my idol, me being worshipped, you know what I'm saying? And that's what life would look like serving him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he would have gave me the kingdoms of this world. Everything that this world has to offer, I could have had access to it, right? He did the same thing to you. He comes up and he's like, hey, man, just kill yourself. Throw in the towel, right? And obviously, all of us, he tries to get us to abort the mission. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, don't worry about God. Go look for knowledge, I, I think right? it's crazy, too, because to, I, like, know my experience. Yeah. But to have someone sit across from me and to be able to see it in your experience, too, where it's For like sure. these seeds of destiny was already inside was of you. It was already from there. And, it, and it's like it was through, perverted. through sin. Yeah, yeah, it's perverted. Yeah. And it's like once that restoration um, starts to happen, then it's like, well, if we think well there's not it. so much an order. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if he was tempted to take your life. Well, yeah, before was, or after, yeah, you know, you're definitely in, not after. The but there was times of. before where I was like, man, I got so depressed or so in despair, like I'm trying to give it all I got, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, even before I found myself, you know, in music, because, you know, uh, I was aimless out there, you know, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't, you know, my biological father, you know, forsook me early, uh, you know, and I didn't really grow up with guidance, you know, my parents, my my adopted father was an atheist my mother was a wiccan you know what i'm saying and they were living their own lives you know and so uh they did what they thought was right you know but they were loving themselves you know they were doing what they thought they had to do uh to fulfill their purpose but they weren't really uh considerate of you know this new being that they brought into the world just the leftovers yeah it's like come on you know you only get what i got left man i'm trying to live it up i'm trying to party i'm trying to love myself i'm trying to enjoy life and if i got time i'll you know but like even you know with my adopted father like he loved me to the best of his ability you know like he worked hard he was in the military you know, he was always on tour, you know what I'm saying? You know, from Bosnia to Desert Storm and so many different places. And he'd send money back, you know, and he'd visit. And, you know, there was always a shallow hug, you know what I'm saying? But I've never to this day, you know, and he's like, he's, I look at him as my father, right? I've never to this day had a deep conversation with that man. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I've, I've I know his love you know what I'm saying? Like, I see his expression of love, you know, him working hard and sending paychecks was his expression of love. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what he thought he had to do. Uh, but, like, I've never I never got any real guidance from him. You know, my mom, she, you know, ran the streets and was trying to find, you know, validation from the world and trying to find, you know, who she is uh, and, you know, She could never really, you know, she had her own expression of love, but I was left to find life out for myself, right? And in a spiritual sense, you know, my mom being a Wiccan, you know, she's, you know, off in the spiritual realm on this side. And then my, you know, adoptive father was dead to the spiritual realm because he's an atheist and couldn't care less about anything that has to do with God. And I hear a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here. And, you know, I believed in God, you know what I'm saying? And I would even venture to say that I believed in Jesus, you know, like uh, if you asked me, even up to the point that I encountered Jesus, I'd have told you I was a Christian, right? But if you look at my life, 
you know, it didn't reflect that, yeah. you know? And so um, being aimless, having no guidance, you know, or being misguided, you know, I found my identity in my ability to rap, right? Because that's where, you know, I flourished, right? People liked me, man. I, I had access to girls. I had access to things, you know. People would applaud me and, and tell me how wonderful I am and all this. And it gave me validation for the world and from the world. It gave me an identity. It made me feel good. I'm like, okay, that's, that's who I am. That's who I'm supposed to be. Uh, but there was always that void. There was all that, always that mm. emptiness, you know. Uh, but it's crazy because when we look at the garden and just looking at your situation, right, we look at, at, at the Garden of Eden and, and God gave them everything that they could possibly need to flourish. The abundance of life you have access to, right? But he also said of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat yeah. unless you, or else you will die, Surely. right? And, and Satan comes and say, you won't really die. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, God don't want you to eat that uh, because then you'll know what he knows and you will be a God okay. like he is. You know what I'm saying? Which means you will be able to determine what is right and wrong what is good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and It'll make you a judge. Come on. Yes. You know? And so up to this point, they didn't know evil. Right. They didn't need to know evil because they knew good. They knew what they needed and they had a loving father that cared about them and was trying to protect them from death, from sickness, on, from bro. pain, from sorrow, from betrayal, from confusion. I didn't want you to experience that because in order for, like when you eat of that, you ingest it and it becomes part of who you are. I told you not to eat that because you will die. And I never wanted that for you. Isn't it crazy that we, we, we experience the same thing? Yeah. As uh, beings, man. Yeah. Like, I can reflect on the love my parents have for me. Mm. And surely they wouldn't, they didn't want any th bad thing to happen to right. me. No evil. Right, right. But I, like, <laughs> dove right into man. it head first. Man. And there was nothing they could do about it. But it's crazy, right? Like, Satan offered knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody, like... God revealed to me, you know, that 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 fruit was not an apple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As as some people, oh, they ate the apple. No, they didn't eat an apple. They ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? That fruit was knowledge. They they ingested, consumed they consumed knowledge that wasn't for them, that was never intended for them. And some would say, well, why would you even put it there? It's a natural product. You know what I'm saying? It's naturally there. You're surrounded by all this. And there's this tree here that's a natural product of everything that's going on. This knowledge is something that is, is just manifest. I don't want you to experience that. I know what it is. And in order for me to explain what that is, you got to experience that, right? There's no way for you to understand something fully until you've experienced it firsthand. That's what I didn't want for you. But you chose to listen to this deceiver, this, this, this spirit that doesn't love you that doesn't care about you and that sets you up for destruction and you didn't know any better, you know? And that's why I saw it coming. You know what I'm saying? And so Jesus wasn't plan B. Jesus was the plan from the beginning. The word says that he was crucified before the foundations of the world. I already knew what was going to take place. I already had the... Hmm the solution 
in motion because I knew what that creature was going to do. And I knew what you were going to do in response to that enticement that he was going to provide for you. And I already got a plan for you. That's beautiful to me. That's absolutely amazing. That's deep, man. And as you're speaking about it, my mind is just like envisioning different things. Yeah. Things that are just wonders. Mm. Mm. You know, I don't have the answer to. Mm. But it's like opening the door for different possibilities, I guess, to see it from different a different lens. And for it's sure. Like, mm. What in the world, bro? But I tell you what, this is crazy, right? The uh, in the in the I still don't get the fruit thing. Whenever you was talking about the fruit, I guess I, I haven't given it that much thought. Right. But I understand. It's like you know when Christ says, you know, He who abides in me and I abide in Him, and you'll produce much fruit. Right. I'm not gonna grow apples off of me. Right. So I right. get that. Like they eat the fruit of knowledge. Right. And people think it was an apple, but it's like, wait a minute. Right. That's not that's not the fruit that it, it wasn't the Jesus be talking about. Fruit. So it's a it's a byproduct. Of, of so now I'm like I'm trying to reprocess and think of it like what is the because I've never thought spirit? about it like that and I'm what like, is the fruit of the spirit you know what I'm saying love joy peace patience so you can say you would know? that be a, it wouldn't be emotions it would be how emotions are uh, manifested peacefully patiently lovingly because. You know, we're energy in motion. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just we constantly got this energy flowing through us. And right. it's either going to go, you know, through anger or forgiveness. Right, for sure. You know, ignorance or understanding. And think about this, right? Peace or war. Yes. And people consume that, you know? Yeah. And it becomes part of them. So this tree, man, what really was it? Man, bro. Was it even a tree? Well, think about this, right? The word says that Christ is the vine. Yeah. Or the tree. We're the branches. And we are the branches, right? Does that mean it's a physical tree? That's what I'm saying. So, like, you what, what really saying? was, because like, up until this moment, bro, when I hear about the garden, you know, the story, I'm picturing all these trees, and they got different fruits, and they ate a mystical one. It's right. Like, Right. And I never thought it was some mystical fruit. I was like, nah, it was their 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 heart yeah. that caused everything. Yes. And their disobedience to God. It wasn't no mystical fruit. Come on now. But, but now it's like, nah, no, no, no. This is way deeper than that. It's way deeper than that, you know. And I would be arrogant to say what it is or what it isn't. But I'm just saying that a bigger, broader picture is being brought, you know, to the light. You know, the word says, hmm. Jesus said in uh John chapter 6, he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profits nothing, right? So when we look, this is why we got to be careful not to lean on our own understanding and to see things from hmm. natural eyes and from a natural understanding. Yeah, because for the last 31 years, I'm picturing this tree with fruit on it. My goodness. And it just got obliterated in a right. moment. You like, you think about this, right? People like to come at us because of our long hair, right? <laughs> and the Bible in black and white says, a man should not have long hair because it is a, Disgraceful. It's a disgrace. It's a shame, right? But if we look at the context of that scripture, it's talking about not having a covering. You know what I'm saying? It talks about man should not have another man as his covering. Wow, wow. You know? And as a matter of fact, when you look at that, if we look and it says, doesn't nature tell you that having long hair is a shame? Yet if we look at nature, let's look at a lion. Who has the long hair? The male. Look at a rooster. Who has the longer features? Look at the peacock. Who has the longer features? It's the males. If we look at nature, the males have the longer hair, right? If we look at nature, your hair grows long without maintenance, right? Right. That means it's natural yeah. for it to grow long, right? But we look at it if it's untamed, disorderly. That's a problem, right? 
So if I come in here and my hair is just untamed and disorderly. I can show you some pictures. You know, like that's <laughs> that's a problem. But if it's maintained, it's intentional. You know, it's not an accident. Mm. Somebody is maintaining that. In the same way, there's a lot of people who are just growing uncovered and unmaintained. There's no order. There's no structure to their life. They don't have a covering. God or Christ is not their covering. You know what I'm saying? There's lots of children who their parents are not their covering. And what do they look like? Oftentimes they look like wild hair just all over the place. Yeah. You know, when we look at things, when we're not echoing the mess that somebody else had because of their preference and their shallow understanding of Scripture— and, you know, the Pharisees understood the scripture, black and white, that's what it says. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. You know these scriptures front and back, but you miss the whole entire point. It wasn't talking about you, it was talking about me. You know what I'm saying? It was talking about Jesus. And in all your proud knowledge... And in all the people that you stoned mm. and killed, in your understanding, they were supposed to be the ones that I used in an awesome way. Man, self-righteousness mm. and leaning mm. in our own understanding is so dangerous. If you're not revealed the heart of God, in the mind of God. These words mean nothing if it's not attached to the character, the one that it's pointing to. All these words are dead if the breath of God is not behind it. You know, like, and that's, man, that's why you cannot read this scripture without the Spirit of God. No seminary can teach you what the Spirit of God can teach you. You know, no, no, like, Surface understanding will teach you the depths of the heart and the mind and the intentionality of God. Mm. Man. But I was thinking about... That was deep, Jesus, man. Jesus. Oh, man. I was thinking about the, uh, you know, what you were saying, like you were on this pursuit for truth yeah. and knowledge. And I found it. Man, bro, like... And this scripture always comes to mind uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It says, The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even the words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And furthermore, by these sons, by these, my son, be admonished. And the making of many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of flesh. And God showed me that he's talking right here. He's like, man, there's always going to be another book by another person in another library of another man telling you what he thinks life is about. And if you were to take time to read every single book, you would just be overwhelmed and exhausted with trying to find out what this life is about. Everybody's got some tidbit of knowledge that they think life is about. Yeah. But it's if it's untethered to the truth, God's truth, you know what I'm saying? Not man's truth. You know, people say, oh, that's your truth and this is my truth. No, none of that matters. If it's not the truth. Yeah. It falls short, you know? And so that which was written is what the preacher sought to find acceptable words. Why? Because the words of the wise are as goads, right? Whatever information I'm sharing with you or any man sharing with you, it's leading you somewhere. A goad is an ox goad. It's a, a long stick with a blade at the end that they stuck underneath the, the uh, arm of an ox to get it to move in one direction or the other. 
So the words of the wise are as goads. It's poking you and pressing you in one direction or the other. And as nails fastened by the master of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd, right? Every word that's spoken is, is, is fastened to your heart and it's leading you somewhere. So the question is, whatever I'm speaking to you, is it of God or is it not? Mm. But if you've already counted God out, if you've already counted Christ out, you're open to any, anything anybody has to say. And the yeah. crazy thing is, That's what it was. you're only open to lies. The word says that he gave them over to a strong delusion because they had no love for the truth. Mm. Once you've rejected the truth, all that's left is lies. And they can tell you whatever you want to hear, and you're going to go running for it. But as far as you run for it, you're going further and further away from the truth because you refused to acknowledge him. That's why Jesus says when, when he comes, he says, repent, change your mind, change your direction. Yeah. You're going that way. Turn back this way and come towards me. And as you pursue me, you'll find more and more of the truth mm. and true love. And all that you were looking for over there, it's actually over here the whole time. That's amazing to me, man. Yeah. God is so and It was like the things that I was pursuing, man, was leading up to later. Mm -hmm. Not right now. It's later. Right. I got to work for it. All these rituals, all these practices, when it's in, in, in reality, Christ gives it to us right here, right now. Man. Freely. 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 Oh, it's nothing that I could ever work for or earn. Man. You know, you think like all that, all that Satan offered me, it was coming with a ticket that I didn't have enough to pay. Uh -huh. All that he would have gave me, it would have costed me my eternal soul. It's crazy to think that whenever you're faced in that moment too, man, you look back and see just what a flash it yeah, was. Yeah, There's yeah. There's nothing left. Man. Nothing. I think about... Besides a whole eternity in front of you. Man, man, separated from God. You know, like in, in Isaiah chapter 50, it says you sold yourself for nothing. And you will be bought without money. You know, I was thinking about like the Israelites, you know, after, uh, you know, after the plagues and, and everything that went, you know, maybe it was before the plagues. But anyways, like they had sold themselves to Pharaoh. It was it was during the famine. All right. The seven years, you know, seven years of plenty, mm -hmm. seven years of famine. Right. When God and, was leading people out of Egypt. Yes. Yes. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. And it got to a place where they didn't have any more reserves. Yeah. Right. So they sold their cattle. They sold their their, you know, stuff. They sold their land. And then whenever, you know, whatever they got for what they sold and they ran out of that. They came and they, they sold the next thing and then they ran out of that and it came to a point where they sold their selves. They sold themselves into slavery. Now, once you sell yourself, you already sold your cattle, your possessions, your property, your land. Now you sold yourself. What do you buy yourself back with? Right? Right? And let's say Satan bought you or, or Pharaoh Something bought you. Something else would have to buy you. Come on. Let's say Pharaoh bought you for $100 because you're so desperate, right? You think he's going to sell you back for $100? I'll give you your freedom for $100? No. You're worth so much more to me. You know what I'm saying? Just because yeah. you were dumb enough to sell yourself. If you look at the magnitude, what also says that uh, you know the Lord was hardening Pharaoh's heart? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to go through all the stuff he went through and still like, like no, you're mine. Man, yes, to make an example of him, to make an example of him. That's that's powerful. But when you when you sell yourself, 
it takes somebody else to come buy you back, right? And and you know the 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 idea of a kinsman redeemer was somebody in your family who had enough to buy you back from the debt that you owed, right? Christ being the kinsman redeemer had the sufficient funds not to buy not just to buy back Dre, not just to buy back me, not just to buy back my son, but he has the sufficient funds to buy back everybody, to pay that eternal price mm. to win us all back. That's beautiful. That's to lay his life down that we may have eternal life. To pay the debt in full, to buy you out of the hand of the one that tricked you into selling. You know what I'm saying? Like I think about a kid and if you got a PlayStation 5, you know, and you're like, some hustler's like, man, that ain't even worth nothing, man. I'll give you, I'll give you a hundred dollars for that right. right now. That's a hundred dollars. You don't even know. You might not know that, that that PlayStation 5 is worth, you know, five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Why? Because you didn't pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't pay. Mommy and daddy paid for that, you know? And so if you're desperate for money, if you want that or if that $100 sounds good or is real shiny to you, you like, man, that's a deal. But you got tricked. You got swindled. And you ain't going to get that back. Somebody stronger has to come back and get that, you know? Or I think about, like, you got a little kid and he's got a $100 bill. And then you got an older kid that's like, hey, I got two I got, ones. I got you know, I got five one dollar bills right here. You see that? You only That's got one. only one. Yeah. I got five. You want these five? Let's trade. And that kid, he's young. He don't know the value of what he has. He's like, oh yeah, you got five and I got one. He don't know you got a hundred and I got five dollars. No, that's a good trade, right? That's what the enemy comes, you know. He comes and gets us because of our ignorance. You know, and, and he knows the value. He knows the value, and he knows we don't have enough to get it back. But that's why God already knew before that you was going to do that. And he says, nah, that's my child. I'm going to pay the price to get him back. I'm going to mm. win him back. That's, man. That's it, it right there. It blesses me. It blesses me when I think about the goodness of God. I think about the word says that in Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his love towards us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we were his enemies, when we had nothing to offer, when most of us would reject him, when most of us would not see the significance of the price that was paid, he paid it up front anyways, saying if only one, if even one would respond positively, it'd be worth it. It'd be worth it. All that Jesus endured if you were the only one that got saved. But it had the power and has the power to save the world. When we think about the, the goodness of God, man, if it helps me, it makes me fall more and more in love with him. Word, it's the word says we love him because he loved us first. Yeah. And that's the beauty. That's, once again, why I preach so much against self-love, at least the, world, the way the world conveys it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I preach against self-love because... God's demonstration of love had nothing to do with him. He benefits none from, from what he's done for us. So in a sense, this whole self-love thing is kind of a um, misconception of what love even is. Yes, yes, yes. Love has nothing to do with 
yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because you think about this, right? We can neither add anything to or take anything from God. There's no way we could benefit God in any way, right? Like, so so us submitting to him, us surrendering to him, even our worship, right? <coughs> Certain people might, you know, have been like, you know, what kind of megalomaniac needs your worship? You worshiping God isn't for him. It's for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you worship God, God gets bigger and bigger in your sight. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't get more proud. He don't get more strong. He don't get, you know, bigger. He is always, you know, with or without you, he doesn't change, right? Mm -hmm. So when you worship God, he gets bigger in your sight than the Goliath, than the mountain, than the threats in your life. You know what I'm saying? Why, you know, you've been staring at this mountain or this Goliath for so long that it looks so big. Somebody said that even a penny held close enough to your eye will be bigger than the brightest star in the sky. When we worship God, it's for us. We benefit. He doesn't benefit. When we serve God, we don't ben He doesn't benefit. We benefit. Matter of fact, the word says that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Everything that I have to worship him with, he gave it to me. Everything that I have to serve him with, he gave it to me. And he could make a thousand of me if he wanted to, a million of me if he wanted to. How am I anything to him? But he says, I love you anyways. I love you like you were, like, like you were all that. That's beautiful to me, man. That's true love. True love is saying that I'm going to bless you even though you can't pay me back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve you even though you can't do anything for me. You know, the word says lend, hoping for nothing in return. Hmm. But the world teaches, what's in it for me? Yeah. If it don't serve me, I don't want it. If it don't benefit me, I'm cutting it out my life. If you don't build me up, I don't want you in my life. That's crazy, bro. That's not the heart of God. Jesus said he came to serve, not to be served, to minister, not to be ministered to. But the world is trying to teach you that if it doesn't add to you, then it doesn't have any purpose in your life. God's like, nah, man, I gave you abundance so you could be a benefit to the world around mm. you. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Why are you looking for light everywhere else? That's, man, that's heavy. Got me rethinking my whole life over here, bro. Mm. But let me tell you this, man, like, that's what blessed me so much about you. Bro, you yielded yourself up to share your gift to amplify the message that God, you know, gave me and my son and other kingdom artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could have waxed me you know, for that rejoice video. You could have waxed me and 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 our other brothers, like you could be banking right now. But instead you're like, you know what? God bless me with this gift. Let me use this gift to help amplify the voice of God in these brothers, the testimony of God in these brothers. 
that is a sacrifice of love for God first and for your neighbor that will not be overlooked and that will that you're storing up treasure in heaven whatever money you don't get on this side you're storing up treasure in heaven and your demonstration of love is what drew me you know what I'm saying to you and and your love for Christ first and foremost like man like your your love for Christ the testimony of what Jesus has done in your life and the consistency of your character man i was drawn you know what i'm saying like i'm like this is my brother and it's only been up from there like that's powerful man that's powerful the light of christ and the love of christ shines bright in you don't let don't let your failures your weaknesses your struggles or any of that overshadow the truth of him in you, man, because you're a blessing to me, bro, you're truly a blessing to me, and to so many others, I appreciate that, man, I guess I'm struggling in this moment, it's like, I don't know, it's hard to put words on it, like, where really is my heart? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's not everything that I do to some extent for my own personal gain. How much of myself do I really sacrifice without expecting anything in return? When I really get real with myself, how much of what I do really is honorable? I think we could always do more. You know what I'm saying? Like, be more selfless. And be I, that's more intentional. Like, what does that look like? Does that look like... like... Somebody hit me up today, want me to shoot a music video. And I told him a price. Mm-hmm. Would that look like, okay, matter of fact, I'm just going to shoot this for free and don't tell nobody I did it for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that what it means to be... Like, I'm not going to say, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to tell anybody I did it for you. God knows I did it for you. The word says when you do your alms, don't toot the horn. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you give, don't let everybody know about it. You know what I'm saying? And the word says, let another man praise you and not your own mouth. Yeah. Let another man praise you and not your own lips. You know what I'm saying? Me saying what I said is... Me praising God for you. You didn't have to say, oh, I did this and I did that. No, I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to praise God. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell people who you are. You know, like, that's the type of stuff, man. Like, and and I'm going to say this. Be led by the Spirit. Every opportunity is not. God ordained. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You really got to weigh it out and say, you know, pray it out, weigh it out and pray it out. Lord, what do you want me to do in this scenario? And the word says, let every man be fully persuaded in their own mind, for we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Really search your heart and prayerfully make decisions. You know. And walk away with a clear conscience, you know. It's okay to say no. It's not a sin to say no. Yeah. It's not a sin to say I don't have the time right now. You know, I'm invested in other things right now that I need to devote my time, talents, and treasure. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, uh, at a later sa- a season, I would love to right now, but I can't do it right now. And if you, if that's truly the case, you can walk away in perfect peace, knowing. You know, I really weighed that out. Definitely got a lot to take to the nature spot. For sure. That's my quiet place, man. Amen. Uh, We we probably better wrap this up. One of these cameras is about to die. Amen. Uh, Dude, I appreciate it, man. 
Yes, sir. This is yes, definitely sir. by far one of the more personal podcasts. Mm-hmm. Probably the most personal. Like I've never sat down with someone to have a conversation and been taken so deeply into my own reflection. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate the just the truth that you bring to the table. Amen. I can tell that you're deeply rooted in the word, man. And Amen. the word is the truth. Yes, and yes. It sets people free. And I think that even just the truth is coming out of you right now, bro, is setting things free inside of me. And uh, it's just going to take some some meditation, bro. Because I know deep down in my heart, like, I just want to know I'm doing the right thing. And I know he re- he'll reveal it. So I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Let me say this, man. God loves you the same on your worst day as he does on your best day. I know that to be true. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's what's amazing about the imputed righteousness of Christ. I always got that from, from, I got that foundation to always fall back on. Yes. Like, man, I have to, you know, no matter what happens, I can go back to the moment, like I told you about, when, when he came to me. Right. I'm not that person. Come on now. And he loved me then. Mm. So I got a song where I said, you've taken me a long way from where I've been. You're taking me a long way from where I am. I just want to follow you, Lord. And so, you know, as we mature and as we fall more and more in love with him, Lord, I want to give you the best of me. I don't want to give you the scraps like I gave everybody else. I want to give you that fattened calf. I want to give you, you know what I'm saying? I want to give you my best. Mm. That's one of the things, you know, they were offering these sick, broken offerings that costed them nothing. But David said, I will not give God something that doesn't cost me something. I want to give him the best of me. That's what I want to give God because he gave the best of himself for me. The treasure of heaven costed him everything. I want to give him that. I want to give him that because he's worthy of it. He's worthy. We're going to end it on that note. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy of our best. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, man. I love you too, my brother. (laughs) Yes, sir. Until next time. Until the next time. Amen.